Mic check. Mic check.
Hello, mic check. Mic check, yep. Hello everyone, welcome to the 18th Journal Club of Antibodies. Today we are joined by Dr. Bing Fei Yu from uh, Stanford University. A little bit about uh, Dr. Yu or Bing Fei that she's a postdoc at Dr. Howard Chang's lab and she's a, an immunologist by training and we're going to look at some crazy work about X inactivation in today's discussion. If you guys have any questions, feel free to add them in the chat. We are on Facebook and YouTube. And by the end of the, the discussion, we will take your questions and we'll ask them to Bing Fei. So for that, uh, Bing Fei, I'm gonna transfer the stage to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, Jadin. Um, I'm gonna share my slides. And, okay, can, can you see it or? Yeah. Oh, sorry. I couldn't move my slides. Let me share it again. Yeah, I'm really happy to be here. And thank you for the invitation. And um, pretty excited about sharing. Always excited about sharing um, my slides and research. Okay, maybe this time. It's good. Yeah, we see it now. Um, cool. So today I'm going to talk about, um, I know like a little bit crazy, not, not like really, really much about immunology, but it's really a really to immune related disease. It's, um, about how, um, axion activation is maintained in B cells and how is that related to sex dimorphism in, uh, immune related disease, especially autoimmune disease. And so, so, um, we can see that um, just a background about sex difference in immune related disease. And as we are in pandemic, probably everyone is probably um, already know that um, the COVID-19 fertility rates is actually are very different from men and women. And women um, tend to have much um, stronger immune response and they actually can fight um, better against the virus such as COVID-19. So they have much lower to the rates compared to men um, across all the um, countries or um, at the same age. And um, but on the other side, um, women, are, because um, of such a strong immune response in a uh, women immune system, they also tend to have um, more likely to develop autoimmune disease, which is they will, you know, um, develop some autoantibodies to attack themselves, or um, there are some from um, pathogenic auto autoreactive T cells that will also do the same thing. So, um, for example, like in systemic lupus, almost like nine out of ten patients are um, actually women, um, and this is not cannot can not only be explained by hormone um, difference between sexes. Because for example, uh, males who have one extra chromosome, so X, X, Y, they have uh, much higher um, chances to get or develop lupus compared to um, just X, Y. And for women who have um, um, Turner syndrome, which means they only have one X chromosome, they have decreased chance to um, get lupus. So that really suggests that the dosage of the X chromosome may also contribute this um, disease progression. And, um, and so um, talk about a, a little bit background about X chromosome or the dosage X chromosome, especially X chromosome inactivation. Uh, we all know that, you know, 
uh, when female has like two X chromosome, while male only have one X chromosome. So if you think about the gene dosage on the X chromosome, they're not balanced. So um, during evolution, the female mammals actually develop um, epigenetic kind of machinery that initiated by a long non-coding RNA called EXIST. So EXIST is um, transcribed on one of the X chromosome and they will start recruit the epigenetic repressors and a lot of different proteins to start coat the whole X chromosome and to silence the genes on the X chromosome. Um, this is called the initiation of X chromosome inactivation. Uh, in this way, actually, we can achieve uh, balanced uh, gene dosage on the X chromosome between men and women. And um, this happens um, very beginning during early develop uh, embryo development. And once the X chromosome is inactivated, it's actually kind of remembered the, the silencing state. So that means for all the progenies from this um, cells, they all have the same um, inherited um, XI, which means inactive X chromosome. And this process is also called uh, XCI uh, maintenance. So, um, so um, a little bit uh, more background about how X exist is actually um, um, in this, um, actually inactivate the whole X chromosome. It's actually basically um, very fascinating because it's just only one link RNA and just coding the whole X chromosome and science all the genes. And um, this is actually due to a lot of like functional modules on the, on the exist link RNA. It is pretty long um, non-coding RNA. It's around like 19, K, 19 kV in, in human. And it contains different several modules. They are um, composed of like conserved repeats um, from A to F. And those repeats are very con highly conserved between species such as like mouse and human. And those repeats actually can um, recruit different proteins that um, um, serve uh, different functions. For example, repeat A, we also call it silencing domain because it can recruit uh, spin and other proteins to uh, mediate um, histone deacylation, uh, so to silence the chromosome, or also uh, recruit some um, proteins for M6A methylation. And repeat B and C, they can um, they have been shown to recruit the PRC1 complex, will further um, help recruit the PRC2 complex, which um, is um, essential for the H3K27 trimethylation deposition, and this is a repressive mark. Um, on a chromosome. And repeat E is important for um, localization. That means um, you can help the exist that attach to the X chromosome and also have the whole X inactive X chromosome to attach to a nuclear matrix, which is another way to um, kind of like silence the, the chromatin. So, um, so, so all those kind of mechanisms are um, based on the discoveries in how X inactivation is initiated. That means during the embryonic stage, but how it is maintained in adult somatic cells is actually um, not a lot of studies working on that. Um, the reason why, um, you know, over 90% of the studies in X inactivation um, field is focusing on initiation because since 1994, um, uh, multiple studies have shown that uh, exist seems not important for maintenance. They're very essential for initi initiation, but once it's initiated, X is inactivated, the later on the maintenance seems dependent on the epigenetic memory, such as DNA isolation or like uh, repressing marks such, such as H3K27 trimethylation. And um, those studies have used uh, either um, both uh, mouse and human cell lines. They lack the uh, exist, which is um, X um, chromosome innovation initiation um, center. And they found like the, the reactivation, um, the genes on X chromosome, they're not reactivated, suggesting that um, maybe exist is not important. And this is actually favored by the whole field for a really, really long time. And until um, in 2013, uh, Janet Lee's group from Harvard, um, they generate the mouse model, which um, they can delete the exist specifically in um, the hematopoietic cells, which means, you know, origin of all the immune cells. And um, 
they found the really interesting phenotype, which is expansion of um, some immune cells such as myeloid uh, lineage and also the B cells. This phenotype actually really suggests that uh, exists link RNA itself alone since might be functional during the maintenance. But <clears throat> however, um, this model only shows the phenotype and it's hard to really conclude that exists for function by silencing the X chromosome. So we're really um, interested in how X innovation is maintained in um, somatic immune cells based on you know, the study. And, but we really need the model to um, check um, side by side about how epigenetic memory model and RNA exist link our immediate model for maintaining. So we really want to you know, um, do a side by side in, in comparison, especially on the genome wide um, to understand how it is maintained. To do this, we chose a human female clonal B cell line. It's called uh, GM12A78. And it has a normal carol type. It's not like other um, cancer cell line. And the most importantly, it, ha it has a face genome. Uh, that means you will ha um, they have really um, well-known SNPs. Um, I already categorized can help you to distinguish the XA or maternal and paternal allele. So in that way, we can actually distinguish um, the, the active X chromosome or an inactive X chromosome. And, um, so we first used the cell line um, and express the DCAS and KRA, uh, which, um, which is important for the CRISPR I uh, perturbation. And then we transduce the guide RNA targeting exist promoter um, to shut down uh, exist uh, expression. And we also have another group as a non targeting control, we treat with the epigenetic inhibitors, uh, DMT and EZH2 inhibitors. And those inhibitors are essential to uh, inhibit the demethylation and um, H3 K27 trimethylation. So that can serve as um, another group as epigenetic um, inhibitors to really test the epigenetic memory model. And um, so we did the RNA seq of all three groups the control group, inhi epigenetic inhibitor groups, and uh, exists um, CRISPR I or knockdown group. And uh, here I want to introduce you um, kind of like a, a D-score definition, which is um, um, to look at uh, allelic bias uh, on a chromosome, especially on the X chromosome. So uh, we calculate the reads, the RNC reads that are coming from the XI divided by the, um, the sum of uh, XI and XA, which means the two X chromosome, and then that score, and also that minus um, 0.5. So um, this score, if, if the score equals to zero, that means the reads will come from both, uh, equally come from both XI and XA. So it's biolytic, and that actually applies for all the autosomes, for example, here, like chromosome one. And if it's XI in, inactivated, then most of the reads will come in only from the XI. So you see the score uh, is minus zero. And if it's a completely X inactivated, it will, should equal to minus um, 0.05. And if it's um, specific activated on the inactive X chromosome, such as exists, it will be, um, the, the score will be over zero. A big way, <laughs> if mm -hmm. I understand it right, then the reads that you're measuring here are the, those SNPs that are specific to inactivated or active. Is that right? Yeah, so the, so yeah, exactly. So the reads will actually uh, only count it as the, if they cover the SNP, then if those reads can be, um, we can split those reads into the two alleles. But if it so, doesn't have SNP, then we cannot tell. Okay, so you have these very specific SNPs in these cell lines that are unique in inactivated and activated, and that's what's allowing you to calculate the D-score. Um, not necessarily unique to XA and XI, it, as far as only a unique to one, um, okay. I would say, separate the two allele. Then, okay. Yeah, to, to really tell whether um, which allele is um, XI or XA, we just look at global file. So if it's most of the genes are shut down on, on that allele, we call it XI. Okay. Yeah, so it's only distinguished two allele. Mm -hmm. And um, so for example, here, um, we can see on X chromosome on the control group, we can see most of the, um, so each dot means um, each gene, 
and um, that contain the SNP. So most of the genes are actually um, lo um, localized, like you know, um, around like my oh, minus um, 0.05. So that means those are fully um, axine activated. And uh, interestingly, you can see both inhib um, inhibit epigenetic uh, memory and also just exist shutdown alone, they can um, specifically um, significantly reactivated the genes. So you can see uh, increased kind of D-score. And actually exist um, CRISPR-I group, they have much higher uh, magnitude of increase, suggesting exist is essential for axia maintenance, specifically in this uh, B-cell line. Okay. And, um, and next we want to, um, we, we can notice that not all the genes are reactivated. So we want to know what, what, uh, what subset of the genes are um, actually relying on exist for their maintenance of the X inactivation. So we did a um, the cluster uh, analysis about the, basically all the genes that contain um, the SNP. And we, we do see that, um, so here the heat map shows you the D-score um, and the blue means, you know, axine activated and then um, um, white means they're actually bioallelic. We can see from control group to the exist group, a lot of genes are still, you know, silenced, but we, we can see a subset of genes um, have a different um, kind of uh, variability of the increase of the D-score. So we further cluster them, I find we find the, a subset of genes that are specifically um, significantly um, have um, been reactivated on the inactive X chromosome after you shut down exist. So we call them exist dependent genes. And we want to further understand what are the function of those exist dependent genes. And uh, we've um, did uh, geo analysis. We noticed that immune related genes are um, significantly enriched in this um, category. So that means exist dependent genes have a lot of immune related genes. So one of the kind of like a most important immune genes is called TR7. And TR7 um, is a very important receptor that recognize uh, and sense the RNA that coming from even the virus or it can also coming from your um, self. And that's very important to, um, for the antiviral immune response, but also people have shown that overexpression of TR7 can also um, induce autoimmune uh, disease. So we can see here the TR7 uh, allelic bias, it's on X chromosome and it's specifically axing activated because we don't see much um, reads on the XI. And if you inhibit uh, the epigenetic memory, we also, we don't see much change. But if you uh, knock, knock down the exist by CRISPR-I, we can see a complete reactivation on the XI. So almost like biallelic. Um, on just on the gene expression of a TR7, we do also see that increased TR7 after you um, um, knock down the exist. It's almost like two-fold increase. So um, we really want to understand um, how exists regulate the maintenance of those exist-dependent genes. And to really um, do that, we have a different strategy. So first, we want to look at um, how the chromatin landscape is altered in exist knockout cells. And we'll use CHIP-seq or kind of run to look at the, those known um, chromatin um, marks such as h 3 kinetin acylation or repressive mark h 3 kinetin trimacylation. And since we, all, we already know that exist is a long non RA that it can recruit a lot of different proteins to, um, in, uh, to kind of like perform this activation. So we want to understand, um, look at that, um, is there any, um, how does it exist? What kind of factors that recruit by exist uh, in B cells? Uh, big quick, if mm -hmm. I just want to clarify one thing, uh, a chip is when you try to uh, precipitate chromatin and chromat the proteins or anything that is going to interact with that chromatin or DNA, right? And uh -huh. so in the case of CHIRP, are we looking at RNA that is interacting with chromatin? Uh, yeah, so for CHIRP, it's more about RNA interacting with the protein. So to, to look at which proteins um, bind to this RNA and not necessarily mean it's on chromatin. Okay. It can okay. be, yeah, because exists is kind of really 
you know, um, code the whole X chromosome. So you might, you find, will find a lot of chromatin related modifiers, but okay. the chirp mass spec can be applied to any given RNA, just looking at a protein bind to that RNA. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, so once we find those exist binding protein partners, uh, we want to um, really functionally validate whether they're very important, whether they're important for the maintenance. So using here, using a develop a screen, uh, more a little like CRISPR ice screen. And finally, as immunologists, we're really interested in about really the function of exists on the B cell, either the B cell differentiation or um, function specifically in the human primary B cells, <clears throat> not just cell line. So first let's look at the chromatin landscapes um, that in exist uh, knockout cells. So um, uh, here I only show you h 3 k 7 because we don't see much change on the repressive mark h 3 k 7 trimethylation, but we do see um, an increase or reacidylation of h 3 k 7 which, uh, which is an uh, active mark. And um, we can see here, for example, um, on this GPR-174 genes, we can see at, at the enhancer region that on the control group, we don't see escalation in the in XI, which is inactive chromosome, but we do see a, a increased escalation after you knock out exist. And this actually specifically applies to the, whole, uh, to the X chromosome and not to the autosome. And, um, and also if you look at further, just um, distinguished as enhancer promoters, we're pretty uh, interesting to um, identify that only at enhancers, we see this strong enrichment or increased S3 k 7 acylation, um, which is active mark after your knockout uh, exists. So that suggests that exist is essential for continuous H3 k 7 deacylation at enhancers to as a mechanism for maintenance to shut down um, the gene expression. And, um, and we, we know that only a subset of genes that rely on exist for maintenance. And we want to understand why, um, like what kind of app genetic features that associate with those genes. So to make them so sensitive to the loss of exist. So here uh, we compare all the public um, database of the app genetic marks starting from DM isolation or to um, all the histone marks and also open chromatin from biotexic. And um, so here we only find, so the conclusion is that DM isolation at the promoter regions are um, very important or can mark those gene, genes to make them um, exist dependent. Um, so here we can see they're all pretty much um, significantly decreased of DM isolation and promoters in exist dependent genes compared to independent genes. And on the right, the ROC curve shows you only DM, DM isolation profile alone can predict whether those genes will rely on exist or not. So this suggests that for those genes, they have low DM isolation that promoters, they might not um, uh, kind of like can rely on DM isolation to maintain their silencing. So that's why they are really um, dependent on the exist as an RNA-based model to silence the genes. So um, next, we uh, want to look at what kind of proteins that will um, bind to exist in um, B cells. So here we used exist chirp mass spec and this um, method is developed in our lab, in Howard Chang's lab. And um, briefly, so we fix the cells um, using the formaldehyde that can help to preserve this RNA protein interaction uh, at direct interaction and also some protein-protein indirect interaction. And then we sonicate the cells and add the belting-related oligos that force uh, here for exist to hybridize. So um, those oligos will bind to exist. And then we add the streptavidin bees to pull down the whole um, RNA and protein um, complex. And then we can trypsinize those proteins and do mass spec. And we can recognize what kind of proteins will bind to exist. 
And he, uh, here we perform this exit term mass spec, not only in B cells, but also in another um, human um, immune cell line, which is called KFAP62, is more like myeloid lineage. And we compare with the previously um, published our, from our lab uh, that, that um, exist term mass spec in um, embryonic stem cells that um, especially differentiated embryonic stem cells, which can represent the status of XCI initiation. So um, on the right, we show you the um, around like more than 100 proteins that we did discover that bind to exist. And um, so here we can see they can be uh, segregated to different uh, modules such as chromatin modifiers, RNA splicing, nuclear matrix, a lot of different things. And if we further compare the exist cofactors um, between the B cells, B cell line, and also differentially ER cells. So this comparison is trying to um, tell us uh, which factors are more important for maintenance, like in the B cells, which factors are more important for initiation. And we find a bunch of different um, proteins such as um, trim 28 RNA40, they are specifically enriched in the B cells, while other proteins like RNA2, they're more enriched in the differentially ES cells. And the SPIN is highly um, enriched in both cells, and that suggests it's very important for initiation and maintenance. And SPIN is already is also well-known exist um, binding factor, and it can help to recruit um, um, HDAC3 and or NERD complex to facilitate H3K27 deacetylation. So it's a pretty good um, pulse control here. And we further compared the uh, exist binding factors um, between B cells and myeloid cell line. We can see a lot of like proteins will align with the stack node means they are pretty similar, but you still can find some um, factors that are more like cell type specific exist cofactors such as trim 28 here. So um, this is actually the first time to look at um, the exist binding cofactors in adult somatic cells. And uh, most of the studies really focusing on initiation, but here we really interesting about maintenance and we're pretty surprised to find um, cell type specific exist um, binding factors. So um, next we want to confirm or functionally validate the factors we identified. Are they important or really important for the XCI maintenance? To do that, we designed a um, screen and specifically for this XCI maintenance. So in the same uh, GM B cell line, we individually transduce the B cell line with um, different the guide RNAs, the targeting the 50, around 50 uh, exist cofactors so that we identify from our chirp mass spec data. And then um, we just use the guide RNAs into the B cells that ex stably express a DCAS9 KRAP so we can shut down those individual uh, exist cofactors of the uh, expression of them. And then we further did a pyramizing selection and we can get a pretty pure population of each population will perturb with the individual uh, exist cofactors. And then we can extract their RNA and do the RT um, qPCR for specifically targeting the TR7. So here, uh, because we're very interested in allelic bias of TR7, which has been shown to uh, associate it with, for example, the autoimmune or sex bias of the autoimmune um, disease. And uh, we, uh, we further um, uh, construct the library by a nasty PCR. So we really want to amplify the regions that um, covers the SNP, so which will be easy for uh, later allelic specific analysis. So we did that for 50, um, around 56 um, um, high, um, highly conf um, confident exist binding cofactors in the B cells. And uh, we use the native control as like, uh, we use the non targeting guide RNA as a net control. So um, here we can see the difference of the D-score. The, we find that around seven um, cofactors are very important for XCI maintenance. So if you um, knock down or those factors, we can see a much um, um, increase, significant increase of their D-score compared to control. 
among those seven factors, four of them are known chromatin remodelers, such as uh, SPIN, and RF2040, and, um, and also TRIM28, which is we found is a B-cell specific factors. And uh, since we uh, hopefully just do remember that um, uh, we showed that exists, we'll uh, actually have different repeats and to recruit different proteins. So here we also look at the different um, um, kind of cofactors um, based on the repeat binding. So we found a repeat binding proteins such as SPIN, RF20, they're very important for maintenance and also eat repeat binding like PDBP3, MATR3, uh, PDBP1. Those two proteins are actually um, have been shown recently in Nature paper uh, from Catherine's group that uh, they are also important for XCI uh, maintenance. And, um, but interesting, the HNP and, uh, HRNPK and HRNPU, the BNC binding proteins um, that are important for like PRC1, PRC2 complex, and H3K107 trimethylation. And those proteins seem not important for maintenance, although they have been shown to be very important for initiation. So um, this actually screen can um, show, really shows us like a lot of, um, or around like seven of those um, 56 proteins are very important for maintenance. And uh, we especially interested in SPIN. And so here we want to validate on the genome wide whether SPIN is important for maintenance. So here we create a cell line uh, on the B cell line that have um, now count specifically the RNA binding domain of the SPIN. So it's really trying to block the SPIN interaction with exist. And then we did RNA seq analysis on the same similar um, allelic specific analysis to looking at their D score on the X chromosome. So we can see the SPIN RNA binding domain um, now cal cells. They seems um, can be really very similar to the exist um, uh, now cal cells. We see a similar reactivation of those genes on the X chromosome. And if you zoom in to look at further around exist dependent genes and exist de independent genes. This is really um, shows you that significantly on those exist dependent genes that SPIN is very important for the, um, the silencing of those genes, but not other independent genes. This further suggests that exist can recruit SPIN to maintain those genes that in this B cells. This is such cool data. The, how similar those means are in the uh, guide RNA exist and the RNA uh -huh. binding domain knockout. It's so close to each other. Uh -huh. it, it's super clean. Right? I mean, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. <laughs> very good work there. Yeah, yeah. We are really surprised that um, we see this. Um, it's especially this one. It's like like specifically focused on um, enrich on those exist dependent genes. So yeah, this is, we're really confident to say that um, exist for recruit span and constantly and recruit span to silence those genes during maintenance. And yeah, this is also the first time we, we can show that exist and span are very important for maintenance. Okay, and, um, and we also showed that TRIM28 is a very cell type, especially B cell specific um, cofact, exist cofactor. And from the screen, we also know it's important for TR7 um, silencing. Uh, and, but we, we want to confirm whether trim 10 a is essential for other genes on the X chromosome. So here you can see that trim 10 a knockout um, cells, we also see a, like a partial reactivation on the TR7, um, this gene locus. Um, but um, we don't see, if it globally, we actually don't see much uh, increase of trim 10 a um, the increase of the genes uh, um, reactivation on the X chromosome in trim 10 a knockout. But if we further um, did the clustering, we still find a small subset of genes can rely on trim 10 a for uh, uh, their XCI um, silencing. And um, to really um, understand how, whether trim 10 a can bind those genes to maintain their silence, silencing, and we did the trim 20 a chip seek in the B cell line. And here shows you the one of the trim 20 dependent genes. We can see the trim 20 can bind to both 
on XI and XA as their pro promoters. And now of the trim 10 a we also see an increase of the gene expression on the XI. And globally, we do see that increase of binding of trim 10 a specifically on trim 10 a dependent gene compared to independent genes. And this is also um, enriched at a, actually on promoters, um, but uh, not on other regions like gene body. So this suggests that trim 10 a might specifically bind us more subset genes and maintain those gene um, silencing on the X chromosome. And so this is the first time we found um, actually trim 10 a may participate in XCI maintenance or inactivation. Um, so uh, we want to understand how trim 10 a can regulate this um, maintenance. So if we look at the literature, trim 10 a is actually very interesting um, epigenetic co-repressor because it has a diverse roles for um, the silencing. For example, trim 10 a can recruit the SCTDB1, which can help to deposit the repressive mark um, or hydrochromatin repressive mark H3K9 trimethylation. And another way is to recruit HDAC complex to help Deacetylize the H3K27 acylation, which is act, um, trying to shut down this active mark. Um, another well, uh, recent um, discovery um, showed that trim 10 a actually function as a E3 ligase can simulate the proteins, such as here, CDK9 simulation. And the CDK9 is an uh, important factor in the p -type B, which can release the polymerase 2 to facilitate the elongation. So, however, if you have a simulated CDK9 by trim 28, the polymerase 2, we just pause at the promoters. It's called PAL2 promoter um, proximal pausing. So this is actually inhibit the whole elongation, which inhibit this transcription of the genes. So we want to um, really um, detect which mechanism actually fits to the role of the trim 10 a in XCI maintenance. So first, we look at the um, histone marks um, between trim 10 a dependent and independent genes. So if trim 10 a can help um, deposit H3K9 trimethylation, we will expect to see a higher you know, K9 trimethylation in trim 10 a dependent genes rather than independent genes. But we didn't see that. It's they're pretty similar. And if trim 10 a can help uh, Deacetylate H3 K27 acylation. So in the trim 20 knockout, uh, sorry, in uh, so that we expect to see that trim 20 dependent cells will have less H3 K27 acylation. But surprisingly, we even see a, a little bit increase of that in uh, H3 K27 acylation in trim 20 dependent genes. So um, so this really um, suggests that the trim 20 actually may not function as these two ways as we expected. So we further look at whether trim 10 a can regulate the PAL2 promoter um, proximal pausing. To do that, uh, we, we find a public growth data um, in the B cell line, in the same B cell line. So the growth seek is to look at the nascent RNA um, or transcripts um, that in the cells rather than just the whole um, RNA profile like regular RNA seq data. So this way we can um, tell whether if there is accumulation of a nascent RNA at the promoter that might suggest the promoter, PAL2 promoter pausing. For uh, just example- If I hmm? can be clear that the nascent RNA is what the, the, the polymerase is making before making the full RNA from the yeah. gene, right? So it is just non-functional garbage that the polymerase is pumping out before. That's what I uh, think of it as. Uh, you, well, I would say just all the nascent RNA that not, not necessarily mean they're, they're kind of garbage, but just mean at that moment, whatever the RNA is just produced. Okay. So if the pod is still, uh, it hasn't elongated yet, but here they will, you will see a lot of, you know, RNAs that accumulated on the, on the very short, like promoter uh, regions. Okay. And there are also a bunch of non-coding regions. They can also transcribe like enhancer RNAs that you can also tell from the growth seek data. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, and uh, we can see that, for example, TR7, we see 
clearly accumulation of the RNA, um, a TRSM RNA at the promoter, suggesting the PAL2 um, promoter um, proximal pausing, well as the other independent genes, um, we can see a evenly distributing RNAs across the gene body, suggesting they're uh, probably start pro uh, elongating at a time. So we calculate the pro promoter proximal pausing index, which is to look at the reads density at the TSS or promoter region divided by the gene body region. So uh, we can see the trim 28 dependent genes, they have um, significantly increased PAL2 um, or pausing index. So suggesting that um, trim 28 may mediate the maintenance uh, for by um, PAL2 um, promoter proximal pausing. We also have the polymers 2, serine 2, and serine 5 on chipsic data. I didn't show here, but it's all consistent to this um, conclusion. So, um, so this suggests that TRIM28, um, the, the factor we found a B cell specific exist cofactor uh, may regulate this PAL2 pausing, so to maintain their XCI silencing. So finally, um, well, we already find some basic mechanism of how exists can regulate maintenance. We want to um, understand um, for the last step is um, how does that, or what's the biological function for the loss of exists in the primary um, immune cells, like in B cells. Um, before um, that, we first look at the genes that upregulate in the exists um, uh, CRISPR I group, and uh, to look at what kind of um, gene or function that enriched in those genes. So, um, look if you look at the pathways or a KGD pathway analysis, we found that very interesting. In, there is increase, like for example, regulation of interferon gamma production, and also other um, pathway that associated with disease, especially female bias autoimmune disease such as lupus and RA. And this really um, suggests that um, the exists might help to silence the genes that are mighty important for the progression or of the autoimmune disease. To further look at that, uh, we compare the public on RSI data between the healthy donors and the lupus patients. And here we specifically look at exist dependent X-linked genes and independent genes, uh, exist independent genes. And we can see that from the GSEA uh, enrichment, we see that um, exist dependent genes tend to be enriched in or overexpressed in lupus patients compared to healthy donors. Well, as on the same X chromosome, those genes that are not relying on exist, they're not differentially um, expressed or enriched. So this data suggests that uh, there is an escape of the exist dependent genes in those female bias and lupus. So that being said, there is something happened or um, there is defect of XCI maintenance in those uh, lupus patients. Um, to though, so um, to further look at at the single cell level, and we take advantage of the uh, gene set we discovered, and we want to calculate uh, this kind of like escape of the XCI score um, at a single cell level. So to do that, we actually calculate at each single cell, the mean expression of exist dependent as linked genes uh, minus or subtract the mean expression of exist independent genes. So if there is a defect of XCM XC maintenance, we will expect to see an increased expression of those exist dependent genes, but not the exist independent gene, although they're on the same X chromosome. So um, that we will see an increase of this um, score as escape score. So um, we first uh, actually look at the COVID-19 patients as there are a lot of you know, um, COVID-19 data at that time. And um, we look specifically at extracted B cells from the um, B um, female COVID-19 patient single cell RNA-seq data. And we further plot them. And um, we can see there are three major subsets of the B cells is naive B cells and conventional memory B cells and a very small subset we call CD11C positive atypical memory cells. Actually, this can be called a lot of different names like ABC or age-associated B cells. And those, uh, this atypical memory B cell, they have 
um, upregulated of the CD11C compared to conventional cells and much lower CD27. They're all they're all class switched to IgG, and um, and also they have increased um, some transcript factors like TBAD um, and ZAP2 compared to conventional um, memory cells. So if you look at exist escape score, uh, we do see a much higher score in those atypical memory B cells. And actually this, um, the difference of the, the uh, escape score between a typical memory and a conventional memory cells um, specifically happen in female patients, but not in male patients. So this is very interesting and really further validates like whatever uh, we find here is very um, specifically on the X CI maintenance, um, but not as a secondary effect because we don't see that in the male patients. So, um, so this really suggests that in COVID-19 patients, female patients, that CD11C, a typical memory B cells, will have um, um, basically increase of this exist dependent gene su suggests that, or overexpression of exist dependent genes suggests the axia maintenance might be um, um, kind of perturbed in, in somehow in those cells. And we further look at um, the use the same strategy to look at all in female biased autoimmune disease such as lupus and RA and specifically looking at those um, for example in lupus the kidney infiltrating B cells so those like uh, the B cells specifically infiltrating in the pathogenic uh, pathogenic or organ like kidney and we also find the same thing that um, c 11 typical memory B cells have increased of um, the escape score and the same thing in the RA um, patient that joint tissue infiltrating B cells also have this uh, similar pattern. So um, this suggests that there is a dysregulation of exist needed axiom maintenance in the CD11C atypical B cell, uh, memory B cells um, in both in like autoimmune disease and specific female bias autoimmune disease and also some COVID-19 patients. Big Fei, I just want to start mm -hmm. a discussion about uh, COVID-19, yeah. as you said. Um, there are recent studies that show atypical B cells being the major antibody producers, since mm -hmm. some severe uh, pa uh, patients do not have a good germinal center response. Mm -hmm. So would you think in that case, since you're saying that exist escape is higher, but that could be the one case I can think of where escape of the X chromosome would be beneficial since, as you said, females are more like, are, are better at handling COVID-19 than males, just on a general over, overview. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's actually, I would say it's pretty complicated because the, also, yeah, like you said, that some research, uh, some recent papers really suggest that um, kind of correlation with the c 11 c typical memory B cells with um, severe disease which is kind of in the contrast with what we thought because those, those you can think of this B cells, c 11 c memory B cells as a um, kind of like a more a little bit like pathogenic, although they can produce antibodies, but they, they, they're not as a protective as we thought, but mm -hmm. more as a detrimental to the severe um, disease. So, um, so I think here, uh, what we found the, the axia maintenance, the defect in this uh, typical memory B cells um, might not be um, actually very beneficial. Um, so, or might not, it can explain why female can um, perform better or fight better than the males, because uh, there's not a much of data to suggest that the antibodies produced by those, uh, these c 11 c typical memory B cells can um, actually I would say um, fight better for okay. um, this immune response. So I think it's still puzzling, like how we can link that. Um, but people have used this as a disease or suggest that as a severe disease kind of marker. And because they will always kind of proliferate, as you said, like in uh, not in germinal center, mm -hmm. so they can go really wrong. And then yeah. maybe, yeah, and, and sometimes high titer of the antibodies can you know, be very bad for your body, like ADCC and the cytokine uh, storm. So, um, so I, I, yeah, I agree that the, the, it's hard to really conclude that um, here we, if we find the XCM maintenance defect potentially in female patients, 
if if that is good for patients or or bad. Mm-hmm. Um, because I'm yet yeah. to find a positive role of these cells. I've only seen them in diseases, but I mm-hmm. cannot I I cannot digest the fact that they're only there for diseases. They must have some role that we just don't know yet. So yeah, maybe one yeah. day we'll have a paper that shows what they're doing in healthy people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So um, that would actually be perfect discussion. I will show here about this this population. Um, so so this t- a typical population is actually not um, I would say not discover a lot in healthy donors, but more um, in um, disease setting. They're abnormally expanded in um, autoimmune female bias autoimmune diseases as uh, lupus, RA, or MS, and also some other. Um, viral infection like HIV and, and also like recent COVID-19. And, um, and those cells are very um, different from conventional memory B cells because they really, they have a different differentiation pathway or rely on different signals. So for example, they are highly dependent on TR7 signal for their activation of form or, uh, or end formation. And um, they also um, highly express the transfer factor TBAT, which is induced by the interferon gamma. And we know that TBAT is actually a CD4 T hopper cell master regulator. And we, here we can see the TBAT is even expressing B cells, which is pretty rare um, for, um, for B cell you know, immunology. And this is also a, kind of like a feature of this um, a typical memory B cells. And more importantly, they can differentiate um, or be formed not in germinal center, but extra follicular. Like um, you can imagine this is actually not that great because we need the germinal center to help really um, maintain the fidelity of the B cells um, kind of like stimulation or differentiation and also with a, you know affinity and maturation. But if you happen outside the germinal center and there's no kind of like a... Mm, checkpoint or I would say no mechanism can really help to um, to guard this process or to check this process and um, this is um, you know in all the discoveries are in human and actually back in 2011 um, there's a group that discovered that the same population the C11C positive B cells and they find a very interesting female bias of those B cells like only in aged mice so they find this B cell, this a uh, typical memory B cells will be um, much higher in aged um, female mice, but not in male mice. And this really shows this, the sex bias of this um, um, C11C typical B cells. And that might explain why the females are more likely to develop the autoimmune disease. And um, a very so, recent- uh, hey, sorry. sorry to bother you. Uh, like, oh, yeah, no worries. I wanted to ask, like, you know, did you or did, is it is there any data showing the antigen presenting capability of these B cells, like CD11 oh, C cells? Yeah, yeah, that, that's a great question. Yes, so um, I remember there's probably one or two papers um really showing that the those CD11 C B cells can also yes present antigens, but um, I haven't seen if they what kind of specific, like the, how their antigen presentation um, is are different from other conventional B cells. Um, but they can, yes, they, they can present antigens. Is, did I answer your question? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Okay, yeah. Um, and um, yeah, so, so our, um, and also since we, so the, our RNA-seq or single cell RNA-seq that really shows that exists dysregulation, you know, specifically in this cd 11 c typical B cells. So um, actually, um, we're pretty lucky to find the recent Bell Archive paper really um, as suggest or it's consistent to our conclusion, which is they find a loss of exist localization in specifically in those cd 11 c B cells. So if on the left, we can see that in the human conventional memory B cells, we see this red dot, which is exists RNA, and they can focally um, localize around XI and suggesting they're fully, um, they, their X chromosome probably inactivated because they're coded by exist. However, in those c 11 c typical B cells, with, which they call age-associated B cells, we don't see any signal of this exist localization. So really suggesting that um, maybe um, there's a kind of like exist dysregulation or the loss of the 
the localization of exists in those cells, they may um, contribute to this uh, defect of maintenance and, and also um, maybe um, kind of consistent with their function. For example, we know TR7 is uh, on X chromosome and the TR7 gene dosage also contribute to, you know, uh, the disease state, such uh, autoimmune disease state. And also those TR7 signal is important for the formation of the um, C11C atypical B cells. So we can hypothesize that this, um, there might be some um, kind of like defect of maintenance that induce this TR7 um, gene expression because TR7 is relying on exist to maintain the silence. And um, then the, the increase of TR7 gene expression will actually amplify this the differentiation um, or facilitate this c 11 c typical memory B cell differentiation. Uh, Bingfei, uh, just at the top of your head, do you remember if CD132, the common gamma chain, is also six dependent? Uh, no. Uh, oh, you mean IL2? L2RG? Or... Yes, yes. Is that also this dependent? Uh, yeah, so um, so we checked that. And um, so because L2RG uh, L2 has no SNP in this mm -hmm. B cell line, so we cannot really distinguish if it's reactivation on, on the XI, but uh -huh. we do see a slight increase of just gene expression, but we really don't know if it's on XA and XI. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because but these we, but... cells... Uh, mm -hmm. These cells are also dependent on IL-21 for growth. And mm -hmm. uh, that's an, one cytokine that utilizes the IL-2RG, the common gamma chain. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's that's very interesting. Um, we, we, we don't know, I mean, because we don't have a uh, SNP on, on that one. Okay. Uh, but we just from just general, just, just bulk gene expression. I just don't really um, think about the FCA, XI allele. We also see uh, increased expression, not a okay. lot, uh, yeah. Um, and also another thing interesting is we uh, in the in the uh, geo function analysis we see um, type one interferon gamma um, production in the genes upregulate and after knockout exists. So here we also see that uh, we can know from literature actually interferon gamma is actually. Um, um, very important to induce the TBAT, which controls may control this formation of that. So all those um, kind of like literature or, or, or evidence uh, are kind of correlated and um, really suggest that maybe um, there is a defect exist um, media maintenance and which might um, contribute to the formation of those B cells. But we really need to um, 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 have more direct evidence to show if this is true. So to look at that, we, <clears throat> try, we are trying to knock out exist in human primary B cells and to see if those B cells can um, be easier to differentiate into um, uh, C11, C uh, typical memory B cells. So to do that, we isolate the female humor, uh, human blood cells and uh, specifically B cells from the donor um, blood. And uh, we prime the B cells um, for two days and we elaborate those B cells with, with exist um, Cas9 RNP, which means it's a Cas9 protein complex with two guide RNAs that targeting both ends of A repeat. So we can uh, now count just around 700 BP of the A repeat in, in primary B cells. The reason why we want to knock out A repeat is because we uh, surprisingly found that A repeat actually overlaps with active promoter of exist. You can see here there's a highly uh, enrich, um, enrichment of the promoter marks and also cadence and isolation marks. So if we knock out A repeat on the genomic DNA level, we can shut down the gene expression because we delete, delete this um, promoter as well. And um, so after we elaborate with CASRMP, the knockout A repeat, and we rest it for two days. And then, then we stimulate those B cells for five days under uh, anti-IG and also TR7 agonist. So this will for trying to push them to differentiate into um, the, the C11C um, plus um, C11C positive B cells. And we also, we use the NAC control as a, uh, um, for here is like a ABS1 knockout. So we, we actually knock out the same lens around 700 BP 
in the safe harbor locus in the human primate B cells to so trying to minimize the um, the DNA damage that uh, or difference that induced by the DNA damage. So, um, so we can see on different donors we can achieve um, a, a repeat deletion, and um, on different donors, and we also see that well, we can achieve that fifty percent um, knockdown or knockout of the exist expression um, after you we delete the a repeat. Then um, after the B cell differentia uh, differentiation, and we look at um, the phenotype, for example, gated on the IgD and the C11C. So we see um, after exist knockout, we see a decrease IgD positive C11C negative, or we say naive B cells, and we see increased IgD negative and C11C positive, uh, which means they're class switched and C11C positive, um, potentially a typical um, B cells, but not much on conventional, which is IgD negative or class switch, but C11C negative cells. And if we further get it on those IgD negative, C11C positive um, subset, we find we, we can further find an increase of IgG positive, uh, which means IgG class switched atypical memory B cells. So this really suggests the loss of exists can facilitate formation of the C11C positive, specifically IgG class switched uh, typical B cells. And uh, I didn't show you here, but we also <clears throat> see increase the TR7 expression after a knockout exists. And um, besides the C11C markers, we also find the transmitting factors like T or ZEP2, they're also increased after a knockout exists. Um, really further, um, kind of uh, validating our um, kind of discovery that the loss of exists can um, be very beneficial for the for, uh, formation of those um, atypical B cells. So um, to really summarize all the findings in a little bit simplified model, and we know that on the X chromosome, exist will recruit um, a lot of epigenetic repressors and here trying to um, Deacyl, for example, deacylate the H3 cadence and acylation and to uh, shut down the gene expression on the X chromosome. And this can happen um, continuously during the maintenance. Um, but if you knock out exist, you will lose the exist um, RMP immediate the H3 cadence 7 deacylation, and you will see an increased H3 cadence 7 acylation. Whereas for the genes that have DMS lesion on their promoters, it can still be protected from the DMS lesion. So they're still, um, their gene expression is still um, kind of like shut down, although they don't have exist. Um, but for genes that lack the DMS lesion, so their promoters are demasylated, um, they actually will have increased uh, gene expression, which we, that's why uh, the exist dependent genes, we found they're all like DMS, uh, demasylated. And the, their promoters. So the reactivation of those existed dependent genes, especially uh, the immune genes we found in those categories, such as TR7, uh, they may finally contribute to um, the increased formation of the class switch, for example, C11C positive B cells. So um, this um, whole discovery really shows that uh, there's a B cell specific is this RNA protein complex that can continuously enforce the X inhibition uh, maintenance on those uh, specific on those immune related genes. And if you lost that uh, maintenance, um, you will have uh, this increased or abnormal reactivation and also um, expansion, probably formation or expansion of, of the class which C11 C positive B cells. Um, so yeah, so that's basically the whole story. And um, I'd like to thank all the members from Howard Chan and also my funding resource from Dean's Fellowship at Stanford and also our collaborators you know, from Ensys Lab that did a lot of work on the exist um, chart mass spec. And, um, and I'm happy to answer any questions. That's a very impressive work. I got inferiority yeah, complex you. halfway and then... <laughs> I know it's just like a, it's a lot of accent animation. It's very complicated. <laughs> yeah, I I have actually I have several questions. I'll just start with one. If mm -hmm. I am thinking of it the right way, the exist 
is like an adapter that recruits other factors to do their job. And yes. what exactly is this recognizing in the XI? Um, oh, I see what you mean. Like recognizing specific how does genes it, how, or... Yeah, how does it only bind to XI and nothing else? Yeah, this is actually related to exist. Um, another function that exists to code the XI is like once it's... It, because once it's expressed from X chromosome, they will attach, they, will, will, they won't leave the X chromosome. It's oh. from the E repeat. They will bind to um, some like CIS1 or HMP or Ceph A, those proteins trying to attach exist to the chromatin. So they won't, they cannot leave away. Uh -huh. And then they start to coat and to start move around. And then, so the, I didn't mention that XI in a text chromosome is also their chromatin structure is very different. They're highly compacted. You can think of the exist as like once they coat, the whatever they coat, they're starting from their um, the XI, uh, XI center, which is um, where the exist will produce. And they coat, they kind of spread around and the X chromosome is trying to fold. So the finally, when they coat to the, to the end of X chromosome, the whole X chromosome, they can fold into very compacted, inactive kind of like chromatin structure. That's how you can see from the imaging the, uh, just like one single dot of this XRA. And um, because it's highly folded and they can see a strong signal there. And yeah. it's going to be not expressed on the XA. No, so this is another kind of like a very important question in this field. It's like, how does cell decide mm -hmm. like only express on one X chromosome, but not on the other? So uh, in, in the mouse study, we, they found like the, <clears throat> there are several mechanisms. Like there's another non-coding, RNA is called TSIX. They can they overlap with exist, but it's antisense, like it's a different direction. So when exists, um, so X actually when TSX is expressed, they will shut down the, the exist. So 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 basically there is a competition around that, but it's different in human. And there's people are still trying to find why in human there's no this kind of antisense TSX. And in embryonic stage, both X chromosomes are expressed. Uh, it will express, exist. And there, 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 be, there is recent paper about like XACT. It's not XICT. It's called XICT means X chromosome inactivation. There is a SACT means X chromosome activating lung encoding RNA. Uh -oh. <laughs> so, so it's very interesting. The humans are very different from this um, mouse system that um, we actually have this XACT will also code the X chromosome and activate them okay. but, and, and like antagonizing exist. So both X, I, um, XACT or and exist, they function on the coding on the same chromosome. It's, it's crazy. It um, is. But yeah, yeah. The thing that you said about coating the, the, the chromatin, just imagining that it's so satisfying <laughs> to imagine something <laughs> coating the whole chromosome length. Yeah, you just need just one RA and then the whole chromosome shut down and it just yeah. keep recruiting things. And um, our lab also discovered that it's just thinking about from evolutionary kind of like aspect that exist actually contain this, um, um, the A repeat is actually very important for silencing and the A repeat is actually similar um, repeat with the viral elements. So it's a kind of endogenous in ritual viral elements that during evolution, they will insert into this existing car, uh, RA. And then, so they can recruit a lot of factors. Those factors actually will recognize the viral elements like spin, like, yeah. Oh. So it's, yeah, it's another aspect about exist. <laughs> There, there is a murine model of lupus called the B6YAA. It's a, it's a cool model because all the, it, it has a, uh, it's a normal B6 mouse, but it has a part of the X chromosome that is translocated to the Y chromosome. And none of the, none of the females in this mouse get the disease and all the males get the disease because they've got this extra copy of several X genes including TLR7 that is linked on their Y chromosome. So that model is so strong. And I think your study also proves that, yes, there is clearly a sex bias and that X chromosome is doing way more than we give the give it the credit for. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that is actually a motivation. We see that model, like just the it's a great evidence for showing that just duplication of X-linked genes like TR7 can drive this lupus model, which is yeah. amazing. Yeah, um, yeah. I have I have one last question from my side. After that, everybody. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know how to study atypical B cells in vitro because I don't think there's a model that exists. Do you think using exist knockout, we could create a model for studying atypical B cells in vitro? Oh, yeah, that's an interesting question. Maybe we can, um, I, I, well, I guess like the, the ones that I showed in vitro are kind of ex vivo, um, the after knockout exists in, in of the primary B cells, although it suggests they seem looks like C11 C B cells, but we really haven't tested the, the function because it's actually outside. Do you really think of exist? Oh, sorry, C11 C B cell formation. It ha happens in you know lymph node or out, even outside germinal center. You ha probably also have other cell type kind of interaction. So I wouldn't say that just although we can like simplify the model, but we we are. Yeah, I think it's hard for us to say they're real C11 CD cells. And um, I guess the, and also knockout exists. Um, it's actually, it's, if, especially knockout, the, the region of the 700 BP in, in the mm -hmm. genome is actually, it doesn't, um, it's actually bad for the cells to proliferate. Um, I don't know if it's because of the just exist a repeat deletion or just because of the whole DNA damage. So, but I, I think the TR7 agonist simulation, we do see it's actually help expansion of the C11 C positive cells. So mm -hmm. um, you can think of that, give them a lot of, you know, T cells, TL7 signaling can mimic in vivo that um, because those are cells are highly dependent on TR7. And like you said, L21, we can add a bunch of other uh, essential cytokines to trying to, uh, to do that. Um, but I know another lab, the, uh, so also at Stanford from um, Mark Davis lab, they're trying to isolate human tonsil cells and to grow an alkanoid. So you will have thinking of this alkanoid of the lymph node in vitro. And um, so I think that might help, like if you maintain them in kind of like this native like environment and then give them signal, we can see a better differentiation or mimic better in, in, in vivo. Yeah. You mean Mark Davis, one of the discoverers of the T cell receptors? Yes. The, oh. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're, uh, Mark Davis, uh, is, um, he is a great advocate for human immunology. So he doesn't do any mouse system. Um, so he trying to use all the human primary immune cells. And um, so they, they recently um, really um, uh, have this great discovery or achieved this um, by taking out human tonsil B cells. Um, tonsil cells and grow in vitro as organoid. So they find this germinal center reaction also in, in vitro of, of, from human cells. Yeah, I also like human immunology, but it's just that my friends won't let me take their lymph nodes. So <laughs> <laughs> nobody is sacrificing themselves and I'm not getting patients either. <laughs> it's just kidding. All right, do you guys have any other questions? I have just one. I mean, it's not regarding just the exist knockout or something, but you know, as uh, but more in general, the female bias of getting an autoimmune disease. I mean, uh, I have seen that uh, at least what to my knowledge, I know that when we speak about one particular autoimmune disease, which is type one diabetes, in the mice models, we know that it's more prominent in the female, which is the you know, which is which goes with the rule, uh, like the natural rule. But in humans, it is more biased towards males. And not females. So, but and I mean, do you think that X chromosome does not, you know, it is because that X chromosome has no involvement in this that is this bias towards males than females, or is it just that the hormones dominate the other effects? Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I think I always think about like we we cannot really um, think of one kind of like phenomenal as just one driven factor, right? Like I would say hormone and chromosome all participate pretty great. And also depends on how, um, although here I show that exists, you know, maintain this silencing of immune genes in B cells. We actually don't know if it happens in other cell type. 
it might be possible it's just specific for B cells, but not for the cell types that are important for type one diabetes. Like, you know, like if it's important yeah. for antigen presentation, um, APCs or T cells, C4 T cells, um, that we have, we, we're actually working on that. So, and in terms of like difference between human and mouse. And um, so in the mice system, there is also um, model, you can distinguish the hormone and X chromosome. So it's really it's a it's at, it's called SCG mouse model, and mm -hmm. they trying to um, actually delete the SRY, which is uh, on a, um, important for this um, the or the sex organ for the mouse. So you can have a mouse have like producing female hormones, but doesn't have X chromosome. So in that way, uh, so so yeah, you have an XY, but producing uh, but do doesn't produce male hormones. So that uh, actually can help distinguish this um, participation of the hormone and um, kind of um, the X chromosome. And they found that they, I don't think they look at a type one diabetes, but in uh, lupus, they do found X chromosome actually contribute a lot. So, so yeah, I, I, I think it's hard. It's, it's really complicated, you know, between mouse and human. And we even, since we only test this XCM maintenance in human, we haven't really tested in mouse. So we probably we and we don't don't know if that will be the same mechanism in mouse too. So yeah. Thanks. Anyone else? Okay. So the best part about the journal club is that if this was a talk, let's say if I heard uh, Bing Fei talk about this in a in AI conference. I would only get to ask one question in five minutes and the moderators may or may not take my question, but right now I can have a personal chat with her. So that's perfect. I, I love having people in journal club so that I can ask everything and have a good discussion. Uh, in my opinion, even conferences, I think they should increase the time of discussion. 10 minutes or five minutes per talk is just not enough. And I think I would, I personally learn more from the discussion than just the talk alone. Because I have unanswered questions and I will forget those things if those answer the questions aren't answered. Uh, thanks a lot, Bing Fei, for coming here today. This paper was uh, discussed in my B cell biology journal club, and I think at that time I understood fifty percent of that. And today I can say I understood about ninety percent of it, which is <laughs> as much as I can take. Oh, yeah, that, awesome. that was a very nice discussion. And everybody watching us uh, on YouTube and Facebook, the recording will be there. It will be processed within 24 hours. So it will be available for viewing later. And with that, we will conclude this journal club. Thank you all for being here. And we'll see you all in two weeks. Bye-bye.